what one more thing from from our uh, our well you you don't want me to call him one of our minions actually he's the main minion isn't he you my main minion man we have no minions here at arcadia vanguard that's not how we consider the fine people that work with us here j sharknado then then you, guy. You, you, you don't you don't like minion you, you don't like stooge when i say well our stooge j sharknado he's you, not a stooge that's not what he is and that's not who okay. he is well then our our lowly paid menial no he's grunt laborer i would argue that he's better paid than most people in wrestling media actually especially with some websites well but now see you've got in the nicest guy in prison territory to begin with well that's true but nevertheless, so it's fucking flunky, J Sharknado. No. You know, whenever we, huh? No. 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 no? Uh, I'm sorry. All right. I apologize. Our monkey, J Sharknado. Again, this is just not getting off to a good start, is it? Well, it, it's, he's the guy that hangs around and carries our bags in from the back door. Right? No. Whenever, whenever I visit him, he always picks my bag up and carries it right in for me. I don't want to see you around here anymore. <laughs> I'm going to start using Lance Russell to keep you in line. Will you get that stupid fool out of here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Hector, 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 tell him in Mexican to get out of here. Oh, do I have that? Uh, oh. Tell him in Mexican just to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Look out! My favorite from Joe Leduc throwing uh, Jerry Lawler. Look out! Look out! Well, that's because Lance was sitting at the table that Lawler was trying to land on. And he, he still got it. He was a foot short of landing on the top of it, but it would have hurt Lance worse because he hit the front of it. Like it hurt Lawler worse when he bounced off of it. Ah! Oh. Yeah! Do you have... I'll send you the clip if you don't have it so you can add it to your soundboard of when... I think it was after they had turned the tables on the heels of the Angel and Brute Bernard managed by Homer O'Dell and Plowboy Frazier and the rest of the baby faces had turned the bucket of yellow paint over Homer O'Dell's head. As that episode was clearing the studio, Lance's pitch to break was, we'll be right back with a big midget match. <laughs> you know what? I've... Uh... I've seen the Brute Bernard clip, but I didn't remember that piece of audio, so I definitely don't have it. Yes, if you go all the way to the break, see, I have a copy of the original tape that was made in 1980 before anybody could monkey with it. It well, actually, it was from 1976, but my duplicate from the original was made in 1980. You see, you like the part where she says, "I hope you die in the next 30 minutes, best." I like you, fuck son of a bitch, you. That's such a unique way to put that together. Well, I agree. She did have a way. She, you know, she weaved, like many of these women of her age at the county fair, out in the quilting or, you know, the, the basket weaving, she weaves profanity like many people weave quilts. Do you weave quilts or do you sew quilts or do you... What do you weave? Do you weave textiles? Is this your burnt mouth again? Have you heard? Have, yes. Have you heard about the bowl weevil problem? I have not. Anyway, we were going to, we were talking about Jay Sharknado. And he sent an email. He did what we asked of somebody to do. We didn't see he's, he's so quick. Boy, he loves to grovel. He's so quick to do things. We didn't even have to mention his name. He jumped right on this. As soon as we asked, who was the, has anybody in the modern era on national television, use the finish of the strap match that we were talking about on the drive through where they're tied three corners each, and, you know, uh, the, then the baby face gets the uh, flip over the top, Hail Mary, boom. And he provided us with this information. Did, did Were you copied on this? Or I did was not. Just... I was not. Maybe he is a stooge and a lackey and a stoolie and everything else you said before. Well, it depends what is on happening here. It depends on what kind of stool specimen that he puts in to, to who as to whether or not he's a stoolie, huh? If he just bypasses you and goes to the to the brains of this outfit, he gives you the shit directly. Yeah, just like any good stool specimen should. 
So, fuck son of a bitch, you, I hope you die in the next 30 minutes, you motherfucking bastard, you. Oh, so, you know, she would, I think she was probably, she's got to be in her 60s at least, so she would be closing in on 100 by now. I hope she's still alive. I hope that if she was laying in a hospital bed and everybody, the family was crowded around her, she's like weighs 24 pounds and she's 102 years old. And she's got every machine in the world monitoring her. And they were wishing, and we just wish that great granny would wake up one more time. And if she would just wake up and go, I hope y'all die in the next 30 minutes, you motherfuckers. <laughs> and, and flatline. That would be the greatest thing. You motherfucker, motherfucker. <laughs> Hey. You know, it's it's rare when you get the one that'll, you know, the person that'll go to speaking in tongues. That's when yes. it's like, wow, yes. this has gotten real. <laughs> well, that's why I say again, she was from East Tennessee. She was probably, we were interrupting her from her handling of snakes. Anyway, Jay Sharknado about the finish of the strap match. Yes, the WW, if you could call, do you call 2010 the modern era? That's an interesting question. What do you consider the modern era? And it was consider- only it was only 14 years ago. That's a mere trifle, a mere pittance. I don't know. I would almost consider the modern era kind of the, the period where AEW started up and Vince started winding down. That seems to be everything that set us up. That seems to be kind of the last era. Well, it was done in 2010. Extreme rules between Shad Gaspard and JTG. Really? Wow. That was... Uh, the uh, the the report for that uh, J Sharknado sent in. So every, you know, if they repeat the finish every fifteen years, no. I mean, still, I don't know that it it fits here what they're doing because that was always a a blow off finish where the baby face could go over and you can always get heat after blah blah blah. But I don't I feel, know. I mean, am I wrong to think that I thought we reviewed some kind of match? Whether I guess it could have been a chain match, but. It was that rule, because I remember, didn't they fuck up the finish? Like, they didn't do it the right way going around the four corners? No, that was the one between Tracy and White Boy. I thought there was a modern one. Okay, you're you're probably right. Well, that was the chain match with Tracy Smothers and a dirty White Boy instead of a strap match, but the reason... (laughs) They got it in the end, but they started it. The the Bluegrass Brawl 1993 was held in the Pikeville, the old Pikeville College Gym, which was supposed to seat 1,800 people and had been there for a while. And the climate control, if there was any existing, was lacking, to say the least. And what happened was, when we got all those TV lights in there, and then we had 2,000 people at over... Remember, you can... Remember from the the videotape that you see people sitting the heads in front of the the windows in the back of the gym up behind the back row. The people were sitting on the fucking PA speakers. The in the ring you couldn't hear the music, you couldn't hear the ring announcements. It is because the people were sitting in the arena. Because the people were sitting in, in front of and on top of the speakers. It was 125 degrees in there. And those guys having that chain match and Tracy bleeding like a stuck fucking hog. And they'd gone 20 minutes. When they started the, I think they got the first buckle where Tony had wrapped the chain around Tracy's throat and put it over like a Santa Claus holding his sack right over his shoulder. And Tony tags the first buckle and then Tracy, as he's being drugged by the neck, reaches out and his hand hits the buckle. But when Tony hit the second one, and we didn't edit this, it's on there. When Tony hit the second one, he turned and Tracy was about to pass out. The chain was around his neck and he could not reach the turnbuckle. And he couldn't tell Tony that he'd missed the turnbuckle because he was about to pass out because Tony was fucking choking him. So Brian Hildebrand had to fucking give him the Iggy. And Tony turned around and, you know, nailed him, or they did whatever to break the count, and then they started it over again with Tony loosening the chain up from around Tracy's neck where he'd turned blue. But it, it nobody knew because they hadn't established it yet. 
right? The, the time where really after the second buckle and into the third buckle is where the people really start popping and realizing what's gone on. Yeah. And that's, you know, and it's hard to do, you know, the, the strap match and that finish was generally a blow off for the baby face because Otherwise, and, and it's usually done because that's kind of the one that keeps the suspense till the end. By the nature of the rules that you've got to touch all four corners in succession while theoretically dragging your opponent around, not able to do anything about it, it's hard to keep suspense. You know, it, it, it just builds the drama if both guys, unbeknownst to the heel, both guys have touched the buckle three times in a row, and then it's an all or nothing. That builds more suspense than if a guy has touched three in a row and the guy's trying to pull him away from the fourth, but he's trying to reach for it. That's still suspenseful. But then they know to, for somebody to win, you got to start all over again. Does that make sense? I believe so, yes. Well, then what did you ask me about it for? Jace Sharknado asked you about it. He didn't ask me anything. He's the one that told me. That's why I was giving you the answer. Boy, I tell you, Brian, I'm really starting to get disappointed in you. Oh, no. You're not paying proper attention. I'm watching all in. This is a shit show so far. It's the, oh, it's the ladder match. I think there were teams. There must be teams. Because it's Christian and Nick Wayne and Pac is here and the House of Black. And there's just tables and ladders everywhere. This is the start of the show. Uh, Mama Wayne's there. Rick Knox is there. Action packed. Oh, Wheeler Yuta. Go. Oh, well, now I'm interested. Oh, boy. Hey, the, the ladders and table, there, we're 15 minutes into. Oh, must be for the trios title. Well, no, yeah, there's three belts up there. Trios championship uh, ladder match. Between how many different teams? <laughs> uh, well, there's a House of Black person here. And Christian's here, and Wheeler's here representing the BCC, I would assume. So there's at least three other teams, or at least three teams, maybe four, I don't know. Oh, geez. There's just people oh. missing. I, there's only two wrestlers I see right now. Everyone else is just laying down somewhere. Well, yeah, they often they disappear. Yeah. It, it's good they're saving something for the rest of the shift. They got a five-hour show. I'm glad they waited 15 minutes before they pulled out the tables and the ladders. <laughs> 